Let's now analyze the model that was created graphically in the previous videos. In this case, we will choose nonlinear analysis so that the p-delta effects are taken into account. If we leave the load cases list field blank, then all the load cases will be analyzed. When analyzed, we can click the Displacements button on the side toolbar to display the deflections and select which load cases to view from the selection box on the top toolbar. Of course, the deflections can be scaled up or down by holding the D key while rotating the mouse scroll wheel. If we use the scroll wheel to zoom into the center of the rafter, you can see a small circle that coincides with the maximum intermediate deflection. The values next to the circle show what the maximum deflections are for each axis direction. An axis shown in uppercase signifies a deflection in the global system, while a lowercase axis applies to the local system. If you can't see any deflection values, you should click the Labeling and Annotation button on the side toolbar and select Show High Diagram Annotation. If we switch to a Bending Moment Diagram, and again zoom to the center of the rafter, you can see the maximum moment labeled and highlighted with a dashed line back to the member. Using the side toolbar buttons, we could also show shear forces, axial forces, torsions, stresses, or reactions. We can switch to another load case by selecting it from the top toolbar, or we can scroll through the load cases by pressing the page up or down keys on the keyboard. Multiple load cases can be shown simultaneously by selecting them from the selection box, or by specifying them in a list. When many load cases are visible, it is often convenient to select an envelope that shows the minimums and maximums by clicking the Envelope button on the side toolbar. Enveloping is also an option that can be included when generating reports. If we tick the Results Envelope item, and then navigate to the Member Forces and Moments, you can see that it is very easy to identify the minimum and maximum values for each member. If we scroll past the last member, the report includes the minimums and maximums for all the members. Let's regenerate the report, but this time with enveloping turned off. In this report, we will navigate to the reactions output, as well as showing the individual reactions at each restrained node the report gives the results of the frame and node equilibrium checks. The frame equilibrium is a measure of the difference between the sum of the loads and the sum of the reactions as reported in the preceding two lines. The node equilibrium is the maximum residual from the sum of the forces and moments acting on each node. For an accurate analysis, both of these sets of values should be close to zero. If not, ill conditioning or an instability may have occurred. These are discussed in another video. You may notice that the analysis results are sorted by load case. We can change the sorting by regenerating the report once again and selecting the node element sorting option.
Finally, the analysis results can be queried graphically by selecting any node, member, or plate, choosing the Analysis Results option, and then clicking on any other node, member, or plate. In the next video, we will show how this plane frame can be extended to three dimensions.